Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Desmond with another video again today. And I just wanted to share a little bit of the conversation, well, the entirety of the conversation I had with uh, Sean Griffin uh, from Kingdom in Context. Uh, this was in a live stream on uh, the Layman's Seminaries channel. And he was having an after party for a discussion between uh, Bob Wilkins and Sean Griffin himself in a debate on uh, James uh, chapter 2 and their perspectives on it. And so, you know, I was in there for a little bit, then I left, and then Sean Griffin came up on there. And so I was like, oh, he came on, so let me go ahead and join and see if I can talk to him for a moment. Now, let me, it's, it's just kind of weird how he is really bothered by my presence. And, and you'll see what I mean. As a matter of fact, when I first uh, uh, start to say something, he calls me the ultimate slanderer. All right. Um, and then you guys will kind of see what's going on there. He'll kind of ex explain himself. Just notice the demeanor between, you know, between us here. And you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. His followers love to say uh, you will know them by their fruit. Right. Well, take a look at the fruit of shine and tell me what you see. To Bob, I think he was very cordial and nice. I've never heard someone that claims to be a professor and scholar of Greek tell me that Thayer's is, he's never heard anyone use Thayer's lexicon as a reference for Greek words. That just blew my mind. So um, that's a widely accredited, credible and established lexicon for understanding Greek terminology is Thayer's. Um, so that's why I chose to use it other than the Strong's tonight in my slides. And so I was baffled, but that's why I put so many, the, t the two main definitions you'll use is theirs goes into great depth and say that, look, all these verses, and here's the contextual instances in which these multiple uses of the word faith, pistis, is used throughout the New Testament with multiple contextual uses. It's not just simply a thought process of belief. Yeah. It's used in all forms of faithfulness, fidelity, actions, both between God and man and vice versa. And so this is where I say we have to define faith. Yeah. And, well, I would, I think I, I asked a in question the, to the In the panel. verse that you're, and, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Th that I wanted to ask you personally, you know, one of the main definitions of faith that I know from the Strongs is to think or be persuaded that something is true. Do you yeah, believe that Did that, you watch the debate? Yeah, I watched the debate. Because yeah. we went over this yeah. multiple times in the debate. No, no, uh, I'm just asking, do you believe that there's ever an instance where that definition is applicable to, to the word faith? Yes, it's literally, I mean, this is this is what I mentioned in the debates. It's in James 4. It was in James 2. The actual passage we were supposed to be debating the whole time is James 2, where he uses universally the idea that someone believes something is true, specifically the universal belief that God exists and gives salvation through his son Christ, is one of the general uses of the word faith that James is using in James 2 as he juxtaposes with anecdotal stories to explain how it is conjunctive with works. So he's, that's why he goes on to give the analogy that even demons believe God exists. That doesn't do any good. Demons don't do the behavior of God or Christ. Demons do the opposite. So just believing in God doesn't do anything for you. This is James' whole argument in that passage. Actually, that is incorrect. A lot of people who use James 2, they focus in on just a couple of verses rather than just taking the entirety of this context. James is talking about how our faith is shown to the other people. For example, if you look at James chapter 1 all the way down to verse 16, it's comparing the faith, the faith that's shown by these brothers to the rich versus the poor and saying that your faith profits you nothing because what good is your faith to someone who is, you know, I'm just paraphrasing, basically uh, destitute, right? If you just tell them, uh, go away and be, be well, it does nothing for them. You have resources, give it to them. But anyway, that's not the point of this video. Let's continue listening on here. And I was really kind of surprised that um, I don't feel like Bob engaged with the James 2 passage with me when I brought it up tonight, but that's just my commentary. Hey, Sean, uh, could you do me a favor? Possibly. What's up, man? Could you steal, man, the free grace view of James 2? I didn't know because I didn't hear it from him tonight. Okay, during your debate preparation with anybody on this topic, could you steal, man, the free grace view? Never, never read or found a debate topic uh, for James Two from Free Grace. You guys yeah, aren't why, as popular as you think you are. Can I, can I ask you why you're surprised then? 
If our, view, if our view is so much different than your view. I didn't say that. I said I was surprised Bob did not engage on the particular verses of James 2 tonight during this debate when I read them and brought them up during our cross exams. He went back to other stuff like John 3.16, John 6, and other places in the scripture. And I was I thought we were mainly going to be sticking on this. Now, I, look, don't get me wrong. I'm not I'm not complaining, and I'm, not, I'm never going to claim that Bob was jumping around because I know that the Bible is one you know, one congruent piece of theology that all fits together. So we can pull from any part of it. It should all make sense. While it's true that the Bible is a consistent story, it's a story that spans over thousands of years, right? From the time of Adam to the end of, the, uh, end of times. You can't just pull from anywhere in Scripture and just make it make sense. You have to stay within its contextual uh, uh, parameters, and then see how you can make a broader context come from that. This is what I'm talking about. Sean doesn't really know context. He literally pulls from whatever in order to make it make sense in his own mind. I'm just saying, if you guys want to steal, man, your idea for James 2 tonight, I've never heard it, but I'm, I'm all ears. I'd love to hear it. But, I mean, yeah. to be fair, if you were going to debate a free gracer, you should know our view. Is that fair? No, nope, it's not fair because I've how many times have I debated Trinitarians and they all have different views. So I did not have a clue exactly. I did I couldn't find an article where he went through James two. I didn't know exactly how he was going to exegete the entirety of James two, and I didn't see him do it tonight. So I'll I'll say I'm saying. Say, you guys, can I say something with all due respect? I'm a little shocked. Oh, you can be shocked. Do you do you uh, have uh, a quick summation of your idea of this James two? Um, I mean, well, I can give you two different. The, well, the whole point was to kind of just see if you have any clue what he's trying to say. Because you okay, said you're. you're kind of I think surprised. you're. I think you're asking this question in bad faith. I don't think you're actually trying to engage with me. I think you're trying to play a gotcha. So here's what I would like for that for uh, you. All right, to hold do. on. Hold What's on, your hold name? On, hold on. What's your name? Hold on now. What's oh, your name? My name is Mark. But hold on, or otherwise I'm going to have to remove. Mark. You. I'm going to have to remove you if you don't hold on. Okay. I let you speak first. Uh, quite okay. a while, Sean, saying all kinds of things against our beliefs. Have I not? You've been speaking for quite a while. Have I not let you, you do that? Are you going to keep muting me? I'm not muting you at all. You just did. I don't even know how to mute you. <laughs> oh, really? Are you sure about that? All right, guys. No, I'm 100% sure. So the, the whole who bad just, thing. Who just muted me then? I am the one who's muted you, Sean. Be okay, careful with so your presuppositions, yeah. please. No, what I'm asking is you. The conversation is going to devolve. Yes, you, you just told me I did it in bad faith. That is, that's inappropriate. We, I said you you ask, you're asking this okay. question in bad faith because I told you very honestly. So I did not find a, a yeah. article from from Bob Wilkin on James two, and I said, and it doesn't matter because free grace people have different opinions on how they exegete certain passages. So therefore, if you have an argument about James two, you're, I'm all ears, man. I told you, you're welcome to tell me it to me, and I'll, I'll listen to it. Yeah, but that what I'm saying is it's just ingenuous for you to debate somebody without even having a clue of what the belief is at all. I yeah, understand what free grace are. is. I've already debated Charles Lamas Seminary, and I studied I, some of Bob Wilkins' commentary on free grace during that time. I already understand his general premise on free grace in, as a whole. This particular passage, I couldn't find his thoughts on it. That does That is not disingenuous. That is not... It is too disingenuous, You can think of, you can think of whatever you want. You're the one that debated you on the topic. You're you the one that debated on the topic. Okay, you are the you one that debated the on the topic. You heard the debate. All I asked I, you. I okay, okay, fine. To explain to me Sean, fine. Cross -exam I'll, I'll, how we felt I'll, I'll, about the passage. Sean, you said that you don't know. Fine, fair. I'll move on. But my point was just simply this is someone I mean should, should be able to steal man. Somebody should be able to steal man. You do it, do it right stuff. now. You steal man uh, to me right now. Wait, man. um, Mark, you know, I, I think not the, the, that's not the idea. <laughs> yeah, so well, Scott, I didn't Scott, the idea is. Do I have well, to know no, no. every single stance from every free grace position on every single passage in the Bible, or do I? That's not what know? he said, though. That's, what did that's he say? Not it. The, the idea, the idea of the is the steel man is not the steel man is not the steel man is not. Would he have made it? Um, I'm not sure he's asking, but much respect. Let me let Desmond ask his question real quick. Well, it's not much of a question. I just want to say something to you since you're here live right now. Um, I wanted to say I wanted to apologize to you if you, you know, if you were offended by the things I've said. Now, I don't apologize for you know calling you a false teacher because I definitely do believe that you're a false teacher. However, 
Um, I do believe that you're a man who's made in God's image. I do believe that, you know, Christ wants you to be saved. And I do love you. Don't get that wrong. I want to see you saved. So the thing, you know, you may take offense to what I say. I, I get that. I get called a false teacher sometime. That, that's just that's just nature of things. I don't take offense to that. That's what it is. That's what they believe in. My whole thing is let's go to the scriptures and see what the scriptures actually say. If that's true, then I'm going to change. If it's true, then I hope you would change. But I don't Amen. hate I, I don't hate you at all. I know you told people, I, hold on. I, I know you told people that you know I'm a hateful trinitarian. No, I believe in the trinity for sure. But I don't hate you at all, Sean. Nor your people. I want to see you saved. You, you still got mods. All right, you thanks. still got mods in the channel calling. Thank me you, Desmond. Hey, hold on a second, guys. Crazy. Let me do some house. Let me do some house cleaning for a moment. Um, I'm representing Charles right now, and uh, guys, this is a layman seminary. So the whole purpose is, even if we have people that don't agree with us on here, the point is is to have a liminary, a layman, <laughs> a seminary level discussion, whether we agree with somebody or not. Now, uh, it can be to the point of we don't think somebody's saved, or we do. I'm not even talking about showing salvation at all right now. I'm saying that all, the yeah. point is, is if he's on our panel, we're trying to get clarifications and have a seminary seminary level discussion first and foremost. If someone doesn't want someone on their their panel, they won't let him on. He was allowed to come on so he could uh, express some of his views based off my question about ontology, and then we kind of went from there. Um, yeah. It doesn't mean we have to agree or, or not, but so guys, please respect uh, him for being here um, because we're trying to dig down to understand what he has to say. If that was the case that it doesn't matter, we shouldn't fellowship with false teachers. Well, then you shouldn't watch the debate either, then, because if there's two opposing views, you need to watch the debate. Otherwise, don't be a part of it. Yeah, I actually agree with NIFB exposed. He just quoted Ephesians five eleven. Uh, we should rather expose the works of darkness, which is why I call out bad moderators like Elizabeth and Neon for their extremely unrighteous comments towards other people. So, Desmond, look, man, you know, you know, we got friction. You know that, right? So I don't want to have friction as much as you can be at peace with all, all mankind. I, I know you're currently making a documentary about me. You think I'm a cult leader. You think I'm some crazy guy with this massive following. Not yeah, a crazy no, guy. Let me no. finish. Let me, let me finish. Let me <laughs> go finish. ahead. Go ahead. Let me finish. Yeah, you think I'm some sinister, sinister guy that's just looking here to, to fleece the flock and, what, and as a false teacher and some crazy heretic. You think that that you know, you've come to your own conclusions, mostly because you introduced to me uh, through my Trinitarian debates. I saw some of your first videos, you misrepresented me in the arguments and then went off with your straw mans to, you know, quote, unquote, dunk on me. That's fine, bro. If you want to do that, that's up to you. But I just want to get I want to extend something to you in the future that I wouldn't normally do so that I can show that to, to make peace with you is we should actually have a formal debate. You can use it for all the fodder you want in the documentary you're making about me. I do say the documentary that you're making about me already from what I've seen, you've already taken out of context my own testimony and overlaid different visuals and different sounds to make it say something different than what I actually said. You're absolutely misrepresenting me, and that's called slander. So you really want to you might want to think about your editing process. Actually, Sean, that wasn't the that, that portion you saw there was just the opening portion. That wasn't a portion okay. describing your testimony. Bro, in that, in, in bro, that, that, you that, used that, part that, of my that, testimony well, listen, out listen, of context Sean, Sean, I, in I a was different quite, framework Sean, Sean, what, to try to upset? make it look Sean, like why, a different why are you thing. Upset? I, Sean, because you slandered Sean, my Sean, testimony listen, of Sean, Christ. Listen. Sean, listen. I'm listening. You're you, not you, listening. You, 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 you I'm can, to say, you, I just tried to extend an olive branch to say if you want to engage. I haven't even finished, but whatever, man. Go ahead. All I wanted to say is, is this, because you, you're here saying that I slandered you. And that testimony right there, the little slip, snippet right there, I actually played your entire testimony. That thing takes about... You did not. Oh, like, you did no, not. You, it did was a one-minute teaser. Sean, you did not. You did, you did not watch the whole document because I didn't release it. I, I know. I'm talking about the teaser. Don't go by... The just, one where you, you took my it. testimony if, out if of you context just, if you, if you just take a, a little way. short... Sean, what, what, the point that is, little I'm bit, calling that you out for your dishonesty... No, no, because no. Sean, Sean, you're, you're, being make, you're making assumptions. Guys, you the conversation is devolving. One it's time. already devolved, bro. Yeah. I, I got to okay, go. Sean, do you think that it's vulnerable? Just, well, that... Hold, please. Okay. I cool. appreciate it's you guys. It's not. All right. Not take care, Sean. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on, Sean. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, that, that kind of got a little bit hectic toward the end. See, generation. Yeah, From the very beginning, I wanted to tell people about God. I just didn't know how in the beginning. I, I was very much passionate without any knowledge, <laughs> zealous without any direction. 
And so I remember having what people would describe as an evangelistic heart. So there was my close encounter with Sean Griffin of the Kingdom in Context cult. Now, like I said in the you know in the live stream there, I'm gonna say it again here. You know, I don't try to be unnecessarily offensive. And what I mean by that, I'm not gonna call you out your name. I'm not going to talk about your family or anything like that. Nothing that's irrelevant to the actual topic at hand, which is theology. And of course, if you are a cult leader, things pertain to that. So if it comes down to you lying about something, I'm going to point that out. You know, Shai, he wants to be considered as a brother by everybody. And again, I actually tackled this in a debate, or sorry, not the debate, but the documentary, that, you know, he tries to infuse himself. Like, hey, brother, and brother this, and brother that. No, Shai, you're not, you're not my brother. You're not a brother to any true Christian. However, that doesn't mean we don't love you. Again, if, I, if we hated you, we'd be lying to you and lie to you all the way to the bowels of hell. This is not what we're trying to do. We're trying to get the truth out there. And if you won't listen, maybe others out there will. And I've been fortunate enough to see some people actually uh, be willing to talk about these things, even come out that group, whether it be through me or especially through other people like Kelly Powers and other people who's been doing the work as far as exposing this cult. This is going to be an important document because, again, it's growing pretty quick. I do have some theories about his fast growth, and we'll get into that. And there's some paperwork and all that involved as well. But um, but yeah, it's going to, it's, it's necessary because, again, it's leading people who are here to him to hell. And we don't want that to happen. We don't want people being separate because they had some sort of weird Gnostic view of the scriptures that Sean had provided to them. And yeah. hopefully, you know, Sean becomes saved along with his family. That is the goal here. That is the, you know, the hopeful goal. But like I said, it's mostly to those who are, uh, interested in Sean's teachings, may, maybe have never seen videos out there, you know, condemning him uh, as far as like his teachings. Um, but yeah, I, I'm gonna keep on going. And if you know, if, if my videos bother him that much, I'm gonna keep on doing it because again, it's always good to get the truth out there. And so you know, scripture shows otherwise. I'm gonna keep you know pounding the presses there. Other than that, guys, I got some other videos we're working on. So I just wanted to show you guys a little close encounter I had with him. Other than that, guys, take care and God bless.